I'm going to welcome our keynote speaker. So our first uh, speaker of the morning is James Adu. So James is a multi-award winning youth practitioner. He's a speaker um, and he's a founder of a coaching company called Innerscope. And he is going to come up and talk to you for the next half an hour or so. So please join me in welcoming James to the stage. How are we doing lit in colour 2022? Make some noise, people. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Really, really honoured to be here. Inspired already. And as mentioned, I get the honour of running a coaching company. And whenever we deliver keynotes to staff teams or students, there is a test that I put everybody through, and I hear you guys absolutely love tests, and it's very straightforward. All I need you to do is put your hands out like this. Excellent, all of you, all of you. I like it at the back. Those at the back, they're quite keen, man. I thought they were going to be reluctant. I like it. And it's very simple. All I need you to do is synchronize your clap with my clap. So when I clap, you clap. Let's go. I said, when I clap, you clap. I saw you clapping before. So calm down. Calm down. When I clap, you clap. Let's go. Not bad. I'll give you about five and a half out of ten. Bit better, about seven. Bit better. Mmm. Mmm. You gotta stay focused. Stay focused. Let's let's stay focused. Let's go. There's always one. If if that person's next to you, just give them a little elbow. No, I'm joking. No violence. Stay focused. There's always one. There's always one. I can see, I can see you. Alright, hands out, hands out. Let's go. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Ah, uh, give yourselves a massive round of applause. So, so once upon a time, I used to get the whole group to beatbox as a group, but after the pandemic, no one wanted saliva at the back of their neck, so I won't do that just yet. I won't do that just yet. Um, but as I said, I'm honoured to be here, because today we get to explore this whole theme of what does it look like for young people to envision themselves as pioneers, pioneers of new narratives. This, this urge, this desire to see literature that reflects their reality. So as we go on this journey, irrespective of what year group you are in, I just want to invite you to imagine that what if today you walk away with something tangible that inspires you to actually be one of these pioneers? In a room full of this size, I'm guessing there's going to be a few here that in times to come, they will be the creatives, the authors, the film directors behind these narratives that we're eagerly desiring to see. See, the truth of the matter is, if that's not represented, there is an impact. The story starts in the flats. The big boys lean against their backs, surrounding the room, some puffing fumes. If only they knew what was going to happen soon. Anyway, I, I assume they knew June. It was her birthday. They are celebrations. No one knew that there was going to be commiserations. Weren't a big house, three bedrooms, nice front room, nice eyes filled up with hood rats. Some nice guys left the house with the manners that the house taught them. Some left with them hammers that the streets taught them. In the back of their mind, memories that distraught them. They had to deal with tragic situations life brought them. You can say in their hearts they've gone a bit colder. As they're older, they got potatoes on their shoulder. Not chips, now they got clips they want to empty. And when it comes to bravery, these youth have got plenty. But the vibes was all good, it was all blessed. Most of them went there to have a good time and ignore stress. But even though this house was quite ram out, if you were to come from another manor, you would stand out. But it was all good. Everyone was from the same hood, same road, same town, same code. Some of them were so tight, they even rocked the same clothes. Some of them were so hyped, like you couldn't tame those. But we all knew that June was quite vocal. Not everyone that was going to come was going to be local. So by no surprise, we meet next guys from a next estate. They were far from best mates with the guys previously mentioned. They chose to stay and hold their corner. They weren't caring about the tension. Didn't show no signs of apprehension. Even though they knew that any given time, these guys were going to test them. So they're searching for the weakest one first. And thinking to themselves, what should we eat that one first? Yeah. 
Go over there, give that one a barge. If he tries to give it large, then us man are going to charge. But wait, why is it that everywhere we decide to go, you always pick up a show? This time I'm not on it. No. Come on now, brethren, listen up. Are you a friend or a foe? I'm a friend to the end, but the excitement has to go. When it comes to combat, he was usually on that. These boys were shocked when they heard him say, you know what, long that. And really, that ain't what they want to hear. They were thinking he was shook. That means an element of fear was shown. But does it mean he's wised up? Mentality has grown. They weren't caring. They were in the zone. They were patiently waiting to catch one of them on their own. If they, if they tried to give static, the fists will get thrown. The opportunity came as time tick tocked on, getting closer to their victims, but they didn't clock on. In the beginning, the predators thought they were winning. In reality, believe there's more than one villain. It starts, they're roughing and scuffing, they're tired, huffing and puffing. The one left on his back was the one who said he wanted nothing to do with it. But before he knew it, on the floor, them boys from the other manor, yeah, they were out the door. Roughing and scuffing, they're tired, huffing and puffing. The one left on his back was the one who said he wanted nothing to do with it. But before he knew it, on the floor, them boys from the other manor, yeah, out the door. Brethren's are raging, can't even save him. On the floor now, about five minutes ago, he was raving. Boy looks at him with a face that is saying, forgive me. He replies back by saying, brethren, the blade is still in me. Weren't even lying. Birthday girl's crying. Got someone she don't even know in her front room dying. Always on a hype, but tonight weren't their night. Now they're screaming, whatever you do, don't walk towards the light. So this image behind me is a treasured image to me because it is a, is a visual of the estate where I hold dearly to my heart. I had the honor of growing up not too far from here, actually. And um, I had the privilege of serving as a youth practitioner for the best part of 10 years in the area where I grew up. I'm also happy to say that the story I just told was a fictional story. However, unfortunately, though, for those that I, I worked alongside, walked alongside, a story like that, although it was fictional for many, the, 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 the structure of that story, what took place in that story for many, was absolutely normal for some. Stories like this, it could have been fictional, it could have been very real. See, the, the community that I came from had stories. We all walk around with stories. Stories are deeply, deeply powerful. As we've heard today, there's something about stories that almost inherently communicate something to do with our, of our ideas, our ideals, and how we see ourselves, our identity. But one thing that I would love for you to walk away with today is that you get the opportunity to pioneer new stories pioneer new narratives. And if there was one place where I learned that, it was in the same community where I grew up, where I saw droves and droves of young people in different ways create new stories and, and set new levels for young people that were coming up behind them in the midst of a context where there was an entrenched same old story. So as we carry on, as we go on this journey, I want to invite you, I want to invite you to entertain what does it look like to be the sort of young person that creates a new story? And my, my job here, I'm just passing through today, but my job here today is to give you some tangible things you can walk away with to assist you on that journey. See, I remember hearing about this amazing, amazing year nine student called Kelvin. And Kelvin was from Sierra Leone. And he came from one of these homes where he had mom, dad, aunties, uncles. He had a lot of relatives all under one roof. And he used to make the same journey from home to school each day. And there's a funny little saying that says this. If you do what you've always done, then you'll get what you've always got. So Kelvin's making his way back from school one particular day. He recognizes that at, in the middle of his school journey, there's this scrap heap full of absolute rubbish. It's full of rubbish. But he decides to do something different. So he walks into this scrap heap and he starts picking up rubbish he starts picking it up he takes it home leaves it in the front room of his house and then he goes to bed nice and early waits for everyone else in his house to get tired and as they go to sleep he gets up and as he gets up 
he finds himself trying to reverse engineer the rubbish that he brought back because it wasn't random rubbish. It was like wires from broken down radios or printed circuit boards from broken down computers. And then he finds himself being successful. He gets to a point where he builds a battery. He then goes on to build a generator that powered electricity into his home. And then he goes on to build a radio station. His talent was recognized not, not you know, only locally, not only nationally, but internationally. He was flown out to MIT, a leading university, as a visiting practitioner. And as he was there, they were startled by what he was able to achieve by himself. He was pioneering a new narrative. But there was a particular moment where he started to miss home. He started to miss home. He started to miss his friends, family, and food. He started to miss particular meals. Like there's certain meals, meals you can get in Sierra Leone. You just can't get in America. And as for me, I'm, I'm from Ghana. If I don't have my gel off every once, even once a month, I start to see double. So for Kel, in fact, this is what we're going to do. I want you to have a quick conversation with the person next to you. What is your favorite meal? I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Three, two, one. Your favorite meal. Five, four, three, two, one. Bring your conversations to a close, please. Is that Newman Catholic College? Oh, I recognize some of you guys. Good to see you, good to see you. Um, favorite meals, can I see? Favorite meals, don't be scared. Some of you are going to be coming up here to do some, sorry? Aki and saltfish. Aki, salt any Aki and saltfish lovers in here? I see one or two of you, don't be scared. Anyone else? Favorite meals, it'll be good to hear. Rice and stew, I see you, I see you. Don't be scared. Anyone else? Any, any favorite meals? Biryani. I love a chicken biryani myself, I must say. Biryani is close to jollof rice for me. Just, just not the same, but it's there, it's there. I see it, I like it. Anyone else? What would you say? Don't be scared. Okay, them, them solid food there, yeah. oxtail and rice. Now for Kelvin, for Kelvin, he loved cassava with stew. And one of the people that invited him out there took him to a restaurant, even though it was in America, they took him to a restaurant where he can get authentic Sierra Leonean cuisine. So they take him there. His face lights up. They ask him all sorts of questions, again about school, about friends. They ask about family. When they ask about family, the whole tone of the conversation shifts. He goes on to say, all of this effort, all of this energy, for, for me, it's because of my mum. She's put so much energy and effort into me and my family, this is my way of trying to pay her back. And when he said those words, it became clear to me why a year nine student will seek to use rubbish to revolutionize his future. So as we go on this journey today and we explore this whole theme of what does it look like to pioneer a new narrative, I think it's got something to do with this. I think it's got something to do with having a why. When Kelvin said his endeavor was to pay back his mother, what he displayed was his why. It was that core driving reason that inspired him to want to be his best. And as we're in a room of this size, I wonder what your why is. You've come to this event. I wonder what, what pricked your interest to come here. And I wonder how that is related in any way to your why. Here's an example of some of the amazing whys that we get to hear from students. I haven't given away their names, but their schools are... There's, um, we've spoken about the, the schools that are there. Please inspire us. I want to be the first male in my family to go to university. <laughs> that is you. That is you. Give him a round of applause. New <laughs> That is you. That is you. Lovely to see students from Newman Catholic College. My why is to make my family proud of what I have achieved and to motivate my little brother to do better. 
My sister is my inspiration. She used to get into a lot of trouble in school, but she turned it around, and now she has a good job working for the government. I want to be known by others for the right reasons and be a role model to others. My why is to live happy. Um, my, my why is to live a happy life with my family and provide for all of the people I care about, giving my mother and father the life they deserve. I wonder what your why is. I wonder what your why is. But then there's another thing that's worth considering as we think about this theme of pioneering new narratives. As I said, I, I remember uh, being a youth de detached worker. And that meant sometimes we had to go onto the estate and engage with some of the young people in the local area. And I remember a particular evening I was with a colleague and we saw something peculiar. We saw that there was a gentleman sleeping rough on our estate. And that wasn't really rare um, because in the area where we grew up, people sleeping rough wasn't rare. However, where this particular gentleman decided to bed down was quite intriguing. He was very, very vulnerable. Like usually what we find is members of the homeless community, they've kind of worked out how to be relatively safe. This particular gentleman, he was just there on the floor. So we've decided to walk over to him. And as I'm approaching him, I'm realizing that he's sleeping on this plastic sheet and he had so many carrier bags and rucksacks with him. And he was in a deep sleep. So me and my colleague are there. We're not too sure what to do, but we did decide that we need to wake him up. So we're there and we're kind of waking him up. And as we wake him up, he just wakes up in a, in a frantic panic. And all he's saying is, a bag, a bag. I need a massive, massive bag. I'm so tired. I've got all of these bags. I need just a, just a massive, massive bag. So my colleague, he's trying to find out if he's connected to a charity that, that works with the homeless community. And in doing so, as we've managed to help him get up, I'm handing over to him all of these carrier bags. And then I go to lift up the plastic sheet that he was sleeping on. And when I lift up the plastic sheet that he was sleeping on, guess what I found out? It was a massive see-through plastic bag. The very thing that he was looking for, he was literally sleeping on top of, and he didn't realize. And since that moment, it's always painted a powerful picture for me in terms of working with students, walking around with amazing gifts, talents, and abilities, and some of them are undiscovered to them. So, quite plainly, this conversation has something to do with your strengths. What are your strengths as a student? Some students are walking around with amazing abilities and don't know what their strengths are. So what I'm going to say is this. I want you to have a conversation with the person to your left or to your right. You decide. I'm going to give you two minutes max about what your strengths are. What are your strengths? Three, two, one, over to you. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Put your hand up if you're interested in sharing some poetry later on today. Let me see some hands. I can see some hands. Excellent, 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 excellent. Oh, the competition is going to be, I'm liking this. All right, so this is what I'm going to say. For those that are interested in sharing poetry later on, this is a lovely opportunity just to, to warm up into it. You know, sprinters, before they go and start the race, they warm up on the sides. Here's a bit of a warm-up opportunity. I'm going to invite you 
to share your strength. You can share, you, I'm sure you're walking around with thousands. All I want you to do is to say your name and I want you to share a strength. And what we promise to do as a community here is to listen with respect and give you a massive, massive round of applause. So I saw all of those little conversations, but who is it going to be? And as I said, as a youth worker, you, you learn how to do awkward silences very well. So if it's just quiet and awkward, I'll just sit here and with my eyes just blinking. I'm okay. I'm not nervous. It's, it's all right. But I think there's an amazing opportunity here. So who would like, put your hand up if you would like to share a strength with us. This I can see one hand. Give her a massive, massive round of applause. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. And before you start, I'm looking for two more. Two more. Anyone down here? Anyone down here? Madam, with all the badges. That means you've got strengths. That means there's strengths there. <laughs> Who would like to share a strength with us? I'm looking at Newman. Anyone amongst you over here? I can see another hand. Give her a massive round of applause. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And one more, one more. Who's it going to be? Oh, I can see a student over here. Excellent, excellent. So we got three students. We got three students. If you're there and you're like, oh, I wish I said it, then do, do just, you know, put your hand up. So to you at the back, I want you to stand up. And already, before you've said anything, there's already a high level of respect for what you've done. But I want you to say your name. And with your chest, I want you to share one of your very many strengths. So over to you. You can say your first and your last. Or just your first. You can say your first. GDPR. Your strength is your family. Give her a massive round of applause. <laughs> love that. Thank you very, very, very much. I love it. I love it. So over to you. Thank you. Just pause for me. Pause for me because I'm aware there was a little bit of a mumble just before you started. And then it got quiet. So three, two, one. Over to you. Hey. 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 Love it, Ash. I love how you had a list as well. Oh, writing. You would have just kept going there. Appreciate that. Thank you so, so much. And over to you. Wow. Love that. Love that. My job here is done. I'll be off home. I'm not going to finish the keynote. Now, thank you so much. Thank you. Is, was there one more? Was there one more? Oh, there's a few more. Oh, there's a few more. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go for you, and then I'm going to go back up there. All right, excellent. So, rise to your feet. Take your time. Oh, I love that. I love that. Thank you very, very much, Sharoni. Thank you. Thank you. And our last one at the back, nice and loud. Take your time. Hey, I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Fashion sense. All right. All right. So I just want to commend everybody that has stepped forward and shared a strength. You, you volunteered to do something very bold and brave, and I think that only speaks to what's to come later on during the day. So hear this. We've spoken about what does it look like to pioneer new narratives. And the first thing I said is it's got something to do with identifying your why. And then I said it's got something to do with identifying your strengths. And as we come in to land the plane, I'd love to talk to you about these two mice. These two mice in a cold, dark kitchen looking for food. And you know how mice are. they got a poor sense of sight, but a great sense of smell. So one of them says, follow me, follow me. I've, I found some food. So they're following and they're squirming around in this cold, dark kitchen. They climb up into this bowl. And what was inside this bowl was butter mixture that had not been fully churned. And interestingly, what happened is the first mouse was swimming, 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 got a bit tired, like, oh, this is hard, man, and kind of drowned in the butter mixture. <laughs> the second one said, looked at the first mouse and said, that's not me, boy. So the second mouse kept swimming and kept kicking and kept swimming and kept kicking and kept swimming. Look back. Kept swimming and kept kicking. And then something interesting happened. By virtue of the effort, the resolve, and the resilience demonstrated by the second mouse, this liquid 
this liquid substance started to change. It started to solidify. It, it churned into butter. And so what that meant is that the second mouse didn't need to keep kicking anymore. It was able to just crawl off. See, this platform that was once intimidating to it, by virtue of its resilience, transformed into a platform by which it can thrive. And I think this paints a very powerful picture in relation to this theme of resilience. Some of you might be too young to know about the show called Catchphrase, but I see a couple teachers in the room. <laughs> teachers will know about Catchphrase. And for the last piece here, we're going to do Catchphrase Styly because we're going to be introducing you to, and Newman, you can't give away all the answers because we coach some of the students through this. But at Interscope, we got what's called the three R's of resilience. And that's our endeavor to make resilience really practical for students. And here it is. I've got three images, and let me quickly define. So resilience is that ability to bounce back in the midst of a challenge, in the midst of adversity. And you can see that there are three images that re represent the three R's of resilience. I want to turn your attention to the one over here with the young lady who is juggling. There is an R that this represents. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to decide what do you think the first R of resilience is? Three, two, one. Talk with the person next to you. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. So we've already set the bar high in terms of your participation and your boldness. Anyone ideas, first R of resilience, what do you think it is? Repetition is a good R, but it's not the one I'm looking for. Anyone over here? What is it? Reaction's a good one, not the one I'm looking for though. I'm gonna take one more. Don't be scared, don't be scared. Refocus is a great R, but not the one I'm looking for. We purposely made it a little, bit, a little bit tricky. So the first R here, if you think about it, she has to be very attentive, and she has to respond. So as a result, she needs to be responsible. Ah. See how I got there? It's funny how you all know the answer when you hear the answer. It's funny how that happens. I was going to say that. Mm, mm, not sure. Not sure. So what we recognize is that students, poets, artisans, people that show high levels of resilience in the midst of adversity, in the midst of challenge, one thing that we see is that they're willing to take responsibility. I'm not talking about taking blame. What I'm talking about is when they find themselves asking questions of themselves. What am I doing that's working? What am I doing that's not working? How can I use my strengths in, help me in order to solve this problem? We say that responsibility is an opportunity to take ownership for the outcomes you want to see. So that's the first R of resilience. I gave you 30 seconds. The second one is so straightforward. I think I'm gonna give you, I see hands up already, nice and loud at the back. Oh, it's not respect, it's not respect. I'm gonna let you off, you might not have seen. It's, it's two words, it's two words. I see a hand there, is it? It's not reconnect, it's two words. Y'all gonna, y'all gonna, it's two words, it's two. Reach out to the left, excellent stuff. So in catchphrase style, if I was giving away a toaster today, you would have been walking away with a toaster. So, so this is what we're saying, again. In terms of what it looks like to make resilience practical, as pioneers of new narratives, we've established responsibility is important, but the ability to reach out for help and support is key. And I've had too many conversations with students where they're like, sir, I don't do the reaching out thing. And to which I usually say, anyone that's done anything of any significance, they didn't do it alone. I'm gonna point your attention to the third and final R of resilience. I'm gonna, listen, I see hands going up. 
I'm going to say, think this one through. Do you get me? I'm just going to say, pause. You get, you're allowed to phone a friend. Don't just, you're just, this one is the most sophisticated one. And I'm seeing some bold hands. I like it, but you might just be wrong and strong. So what I'm saying is, discuss it with a friend. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you 30 seconds. What is the third and final R of resilience? Five, four, three, two, one, zero. So I see some confident hands over here. Re sorry? I see recreate, and I think I heard recover as well. They, you're definitely on the right lines, but it's not the R I am looking for. Over to you. Repair is a good R, not what I'm looking for. Retry, these are all great words, not what I'm looking for. Over to you. Reconnect is great, but not what I'm looking for. Over to you. Rebuild, no. Repair, no. I, I want to hear these guys on the right because they've been a bit chilled. So I wanna, they're starting to contribute. I want to hear. Over to you, nice and loud. Reconstruct is a great R, but it's not what I'm looking for. Repurpose, oh, this is great, but no. Rebuild, no. Reform, no. Repair. No. All right, I'm going to put you out of your misery. Re reconcile. <laughs> it's not reassemble. <laughs> so listen to this. Listen to this. I'm going to take you out of your misery now. So as you can see, once upon a time, this bowl was a normal bowl. It would have been used for cereal, and it would have been used for all of that great stuff there, like your Cocoa Pops and your Cheerios. However, one day... Unfortunately, the bowl smashed. Now I, know, I know in my home, when that happens, I try and sweep up the evidence quickly before my wife finds out and get it in the bin. Last two times, she found out. But in some places in the world, they do something very, very different. What they do is after the bowl smashed, as you can see, they intentionally and meticulously get each piece and then they get gold and then they get glue and they glue it all back together, and then they rebuild it. But that's not the R I'm looking for. Nah. I said rebuild. Yeah, I know. It's not the R I'm looking for. So they rebuild the bowl. But there's an underlying ethos that informs what they're doing here. See, once they rebuild this bowl, once they rebuild the bowl, some of you are like, just say the R. I think of <laughs> Once they rebuild the bowl, they no longer use it for Cheerios, they put it in a valued place in the house. The reason why they do this is because they're saying if the bowl didn't smash, we wouldn't have had to get all the pieces, all the gold, all the glue, and we wouldn't be able to behold the beauty of the bowl now. So in one sense, there's an appreciation for the smashing of the bowl. We call that reframing. Don't do that. Don't do that. I gave you so much. To don't. You're like, like, yeah, oh, that was my next one. It wasn't. It wasn't. We would have been here all day. Very sophisticated. So reframing, we, we, we summarize reframing like this. Reframing is the ability to look at a problem or a challenge in a new way that helps you move forward. The ability to look at a problem or a challenge in a new way that helps you move forward. And essentially, this conference is in being because there's a recognition that there's a problem. There's a lack of representation in literature. And the, and the, the studies show that the impact of that is quite significant in terms of the formation of young people from the global majority. And even for young people that are not in the global majority, they are missing out as well. How can we look at this problem in a new way that helps us move forward? The final thing I'm going to say is this. I want you to consider what it looks like to have a pioneer's perspective 
being one of those students that are proactive and reflective, holding on to your goals. Don't allow them to be neglected because you've got a powerful why that's not to be messed with. I want you to stay focused, see, because we're living in times where so many people seem hopeless. Have you noticed? Well, I hope this gives you food for thought, so take note and take notice. I want you to realize that you've got strengths to actualize, so strategize. I'm just here to catalyze. It's up to you to maximize, so play to win. You owe it to yourself to put the effort in. And once you lean into your strengths, your dangerous doubts will never win. I want you to move from intention to action. We know that you can prove that you can make this happen. We invite you to soar. Is the challenge accepted? We want to see you move forward with a pioneer's perspective. It's been a pleasure spending time with you. This morning.